Hi, Eva Nichols here, your watercolor artist. I'm going to give you some little studio tips today uh, about the materials that I use. And uh, first we are going to go through um, the paints I like to use, the colors, and um, the palette, my brushes, paper, and I um, hope uh, this will be helpful for you, especially if you're starting out uh, with watercolor. So I can give you some tips on what to buy and what not to buy. All right, so today I wanted to uh, show you uh, what I like to use, like the basic materials that I like to use. So first of all, um, I love my watercolor palette. I use this one here, the Travel Palette uh, by Jane E. Jones. Um, comes with a lid and um, it has uh, 12 round wells in a circle and let me just open here so you can see. Um, so there's room for 12 colors and that's plenty I find on a palette and actually if you're just starting out just get started with the primary colors right blue and yellow and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but I love this palette because it's um, a nice size. It's big enough that I can use it in my studio. It's, it measures about 8 by 11 um, and it's easy to uh, pack. It goes in a backpack it goes um, when I'm traveling abroad in my suitcase um, and uh, has a lot of little areas out here and I use them for mixing areas and then it has a nice big mixing area uh, in the center and then if you need more than that you can use these four separated areas in the lid so um, Janie Jones travel palette with lid for watercolors is my favorite uh, watercolor palette. So I'm going to show you the colors that I like to put in here and um, here is a palette that is well worn. You can see some of the... I mean they're, nothing lasts forever but it's lasted me for a lot of years and I can see you know some of the little things here on the side are breaking up but this one I keep it in a studio most of the time anyway so it's no big deal and you can see I've taped over uh, some watercolor paper here and I have uh, all the colors I have in my palette and I'm gonna go through how to do a watercolor guide for your palette um, in a separate uh, video. Um, it's, a, it's a great great tool and I'll talk more about that once we get to that. The colors I use and if you're just starting out and you need to buy your very, very first palette and your first colors, um, I would say to you, don't skimp on the colors quality-wise. Start with just the primary colors, a red, a blue, and a yellow. And then you can add on from there. It's much better than getting 12 or 20 colors in a set. Um, but where the, where the quality is not very good. So you must bit off this way. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, the red I like to use is called quinacridone red. And I have a tube here that I can show you. This is well worn. So um, quinacridone red. Uh, this one is by Winsor Newton. That's the brand I use mostly, but it, I don't care too much about the brand. Uh, what I care about is that you get the professional grade or artist grade uh, colors because they have much more uh, pigment in them. The cheaper uh, kinds like for students and stuff, uh, they have a lot of filler in them. And so in, in all honesty, you don't really get much uh, for your money, I feel. You get a lot of filler and a little bit of pigment. And then when you want to make darks or you want to make really brilliant colors, uh, they're not going to do it for you and you end up using a lot more paint than you do if they are uh, full strength pigmented. So quinacridone red and on my palettes and my palette guide I usually start with the red on top because I can find it. So that's the red here on my palette um, and I could actually squeeze out a little bit more but I'm, I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, I like to fill my palette up you know pretty well so that um, I don't want to have to run out of paint halfway through. Uh, a painting 
and then have to stop everything I'm doing, find the tube, squeeze it out, and then continue. So, and I also like my colors to kind of dry out in my well, in my wells here, because I find it easier to control how much I get on the brush then. Um, and I also, uh, you know, travel back and forth a lot because I teach a lot of classes. And so if they were all freshly squeezed out of the tubes and all wet, if I, um, by accident, you know, uh, got my palette upside down or on the side, then all the colors would flow together and I'd have one big mess on my hands. Whereas when they're dry, um, you know, nothing happens. So, anyway, back to the colors. So, so that was the quinacridone red. So, if you're starting out, I would get a, um, a tube of quinacridone red, and the tubes come in different sizes. The small tubes are like this. Um, this has um, point one. It's five millimeters. That's how, or, or point uh, one seven. US flowing ounce, but you know, five millimeter tubes, they're like this size. So they're pretty small. Um, and a tube like this in artist quality will probably cost you somewhere between seven and twelve dollars. So you can see they are a little on the pricey side. So that's why I'm saying, you know, don't worry about getting like a whole bunch of colors, just get the, the three primary colors, and that way you'll also get a much better understanding of how um, color relationships are and how to mix your own colors and things like that, which are very helpful. So that was the red, quinacridone red. And uh, you can get it in this little tube if you're really on a budget and just want to start out. And also if you don't really, really know if that's going to be your new passion, uh, start with a little five millimeter tubes, that's fine. Um, if you're already uh, an, uh, a watercolor artist or you've been painting with watercolors and you love it, I would say that you get a much better deal if you go up to the bigger tubes, like 14 millimeter, uh, milliliters, like this one, which is uh, 0.47 US flowing ounces. Uh, you know, it's like with everything in life. If you buy the bigger size, you you know, if you break it down, you get a better price. Uh, and it's no different with watercolors. So that's the 14 millimeter tubes. And then I, of course, you know, I paint a lot and I teach a lot. So I, wherever possible, I get the really big tubes. These are 37 milliliter, and of course, you know, it gives me a much better price. But, you know, you might not need to have that much color. So um, that was the size. So let's go back to the other color. So let's go uh, and uh, talk about the next primary color, which is yellow. And I love this yellow. It's called transparent yellow. Uh, and the only brand that I have found that has transparent yellow is Winsor Newton. And the reason I love it so much is that it is truly transparent. Most of the yellows, um, they're more opaque. They have more white in them, and I don't really like that. But, you know, personal preference. But that's my go-to yellow. And the funny thing about it is um, this yellow is so ugly, and I still remember when I when I got the tube home and I looked at it, see, it's that kind of brownish yellow color. When it's dried out, it looks not very attractive. But the minute you um, get it watered down, it is just glorious. Um, so that one I have over here, so you can see already that I'm spreading my, um, my primary colors around on the palette. I don't put them like red, yellow, blue. No, I try to keep it in, um, the order of the color wheel. Uh, and then my last primary color would be blue. And for the blue, I like to use French ultramarine blue. It's this one here. Um, and over here on my palette, it's this one. Uh, and um, if you're only getting one blue, I would, I would recommend you start with the French ultramarine blue. It's very versatile. It plays really well with the transparent yellow and the quinacridone red so you can get some lovely purples you can get some lovely greens and if you mix all three colors together you can get a really really rich dark like a black um, and you're all set i have a lot of paintings that i've painted just with the primary colors um, so get started there and then um, let's walk work our way down and so you can see what else I have on my palette. I limit myself, as I think I mentioned earlier, I limit myself to the 12 wells I have in my palette. I think that's plenty. So my next color, next to the red, 
moving towards the blues is I have a permanent rose um, that's a pinkish red which will give you even more brilliant purples when you mix it together with the French ultramarine blue uh, because permanent rose has a little bit of blue in it already. So that was permanent rose and then I have a a really fun, uh, very bright pink that I happen to love. Uh, it's called Opera Rose and it's a, like a neon pink. And I like it because, you know, for florals and stuff like that, I think it's great. And then I like to use it, um, mixing it up with either French Ultramarine Blue or Cobalt Blue for uh, shadows on snow and that kind of stuff. So that's you know that that's one of the like you don't don't have to have colors if if you're not really a pink person uh, you might want to you know use another color um, but I like it and uh, permanent magenta uh, I have that on my palette and that's kind of like a reddish purple and so it's more of a secondary color the reason I have it on my my palette is um, that permanent magenta is a fabulous color. Uh, when I need to deepen and darken pinks and reds because it'll make the quinacridone red or the permanent rose or even the opera um, much darker but it'll still have that quality of being red or pink. Um, if I try to darken them with a the blue often they tend to go a little bit um, too, um, too purple on me. And then we have the French ultramarine blue which we already talked about and then the other blue that I really love um, is cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is um, more of a true blue. And the only reason, this one's almost used up, the only reason that I don't say get that one if you're only getting one blue is that it's only a mid-tone. Can you see it's not as dark as the French ultramarine blue? This is cobalt. This is French ultramarine blue. Uh, cobalt blue is a mid-tone, so it won't give you any darks. Um, but it does give fabulous, fabulous um, shadow colors and skies and things like that. So it's a, it's a very, very useful color. And the next blue I have is Antwerp blue. It's this one here. And all the ones I've mentioned so far that I have on my palette are from Winter Newton. Um, Antwerp blue is a much more, it's a very dark blue, first of all. And you can see it has much more of a green tone to it if you compare it to either the cobalt or the French ultramarine blue. Um, so that'll give very bright greens if you mix it with transparent yellow. Um, it will give a little bit more uh, subdued uh, purples if you mix it with the reds. Uh, but it'll still do okay. It can give like really rich dark purples. Um, and then the next color I have on, that's another kind of a little bit in the same realm as the Opera Rose. It's kind of what I call a fun color. It's called Peacock Blue. And it's actually by a different brand. Um, I don't know what color in the uh, Winter Newton would be close to it. Peacock Blue is a very turquoisey, bright turquoisey blue, as you can see there. And it's also a little bit staining. Uh, it's it's close to uh, if any of you use the uh, uh, phthalo blue, um, and peacock is a little bit. It's it's kind of the same type of color, but it's not quite as staining and as dominant uh, as the uh, phthalo blue is. So, I I have recently added that to my palette instead of phthalo blue, and then I have indigo, which is a very very rich dark blue that also um, has a little bit of yellow in it and the indigo from Winter Newton re is more blue and less gray than a lot of the other indigos that I've seen from other brands so that's why I'm kind of a fan of the indigo from Winter Newton um, but you know not to say that uh, other brands don't have nice indigos but it's just like the Winter Newtons will be um, I use it a lot for evergreens, you know, and stuff like that, with a li with a little bit of burnt sienna in it, and they will go like a, a rich uh, forest green color. And then we're back to the transparent yellow. 
We already talked about that. And then I have another yellow on my palette that's the Quinacridone Gold. Um, that's not a strictly, ne strictly necessary to have that color, I don't feel. But it is a wonderful color to mix with, especially Antwerp, for some rich greens. Um, so it is nice for, for certain things. It's probably one of the colors I use the least. And on some of my palettes, you know, since I limit myself to 12 colors, I'll actually kick it off and then introduce another color that I kind of feel like playing around with. Um, but uh, it's, it's a warm yellow. That's basically what it is. And then the last color on my palette is Burnt Shenna. And Burnt Shenna is one of the earth tones. Uh, also, it's like a, one of the old colors, so to speak, along with French Ultramarine Blue. Um, those have been, you know, used by painters for centuries. Uh, I love the Burnt Shenna because it's, again, I could totally mix a Burnt Shenna if I used Quinacridone Red and Transparent Yellow and first mix those two and I would get an orange. And then I would take my French Ultramarine Blue and put a little bit of it in until it tones the orange down and it becomes a burnt sienna. However, anytime you have to mix three colors together to get a certain shade, you're gonna be going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth a lot. So it's gonna take you a little while to get to the color you're looking for. And that's where burnt sienna comes in so handy. You know, I can get it right out of the tube. And then if I mix it with the French ultramarine blue or the cobalt blue, I'll get anything from blue grays over to dark browns if I'm using the French ultramarine and a little bit lighter browns if I'm using the cobalt blue. Um, because burnt sienna is basically an orange that's been dirtied up with a little bit of blue and you put a little bit more blue in it and you have, you know, complementary colors that neutralize each other, orange and blue. Uh, so that's why it's on my palette. And then the burnt sienna from Winter Newton together with the indigo from Winter Newton they actually create a very rich, rich, dark, evergreen, green color. And since I live up in the uh, mountains up in, by Lake Tahoe, we have a lot of evergreens up here. And so I paint a lot of evergreens and that color is just, the, that mixture of burnt sienna and indigo, they're just brilliant for that. So there are my 12 colors. And then um, I am going to... Uh, Go and talk. Go back and talk about my brushes.